people have learned breast imaging under her able guidance. Uh, she is consultant breast imaging and interventions at NM Medical Mumbai and former consultant radiologist and assistant professor at the Ottawa Hospital, University of Ottawa, Canada. She has uh, received the prestigious President Appreciation Award, IRI ICRI 2021, and uh, she has been invited for more than 400 lectures at various national and international platforms. We welcome you, ma'am, and over to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to uh, share my screen here. Uh, you know, this morning I forgot to do something that I normally do and uh, please forgive me. I think it's very important for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, a little prayer here. Ye Ishvara Sarvana Sangli Buddhi De Arogya De Sarvana Sukha Tanandat Aishwarya Athe Sarvansa Bhala Kar Kalyan Kar Rakshan Kar Aani Tuzhe Godna Mukhat Khanda Rahude Sagrunath Maharaj Ki Jai. Okay, without further ado. Let's talk about evaluation of palpable breast lumps. Okay, now this is an important statement that I came across very early on. And this is by Benjamin Franklin. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Means you not just get back for what you have learned, but you get back multiplied and magnified. So every minute, every second, every moment that you invest in, in learning and acquiring knowledge is time well spent. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? You know, when women get um, a breast problem, all they are concerned about is, do I have cancer or no cancer? Okay, so our job as a radiologist is to give that answer, cancer or no cancer. They don't care about this could be this, that could be that, it is indeterminate, six month follow up biopsy, they want us to tell in simple words. So how can we facilitate that? How can we do that? Okay. Having said that, sometimes it is not that easy. Okay. So we want to know other than the conventional methods, how do we problem solve when ultrasound features or mammographic features are equivocal on um, uh, are equivocal and we need to, we need to do something else. How do we identify which masses we can biopsy? How do we correlate ultrasound findings with mammogram? How do we problem solve when both mammogram and ultrasound do not give us the answer? Okay, And what is the role of contrast enhanced uh, MRI or contrast enhanced mammography in evaluation of palpable breast lump? So these are some of the things that we are going to see in the next 30 minutes. Okay, New onset palpable lump is a common presenting symptom of breast cancer. Okay, Having said that, only 20%, less than 20% of palpable lungs are cancerous or precancerous. The rest are benign. It is not possible, however, to distinguish benign from malignant just based on clinical palpation. Okay. And therefore, we need investigations. Investigations in the form of a mammogram, breast ultrasound. And when do we decide that we need to do more? Okay. Remember, Mammogram and ultrasound is basically anatomical or structural imaging for evaluation of palpable lumps, okay? But sometimes they have limitations. And in those cases, we rely on functional imaging, okay? Which is based on the principle of neoangiogenesis. And that's where we require contrast-enhanced MRI or contrast-enhanced mammography for further evaluation. So knowing these basics, we know that these are the few tools that we have in our armamentorium to come to a diagnosis. So let's look at a few cases here. Here are two cases. One is a 63-year-old with a palpable mass in the medial left breast, and the other is a 68-year-old with a palpable mass in the upper outer quadrant of the left breast. The age group is similar. Patients, when they got the ultrasound done, the appearances of irregular, hypoechoic, solid masses with focal or dense posterior shadowing, okay? What is the most probable diagnosis? Amitusha, can we have the polling, please? A, both are cancer. B, both are benign. C, case one is cancer and case two benign. D, case one is benign and case two is cancer. Or E, we need a mammogram for correlation.
Okay. I'm glad people are participating. Okay, good. So 150 have voted and um, most of you think that uh, we need a mammogram for correlation. About 25% think, like almost 50% think that we need a mammogram for correlation. However, 25% are thinking that both are cancer, okay? Now this is something I want to caution you against. Do not be in the mindset of coming to a diagnosis just based on your ultrasound findings. And the, I'll explain to you what the, the reason for that, okay? So when we did the mammogram, what did we find? Okay, on the mammogram, this is what we see. In case one, in the medial aspect of the left breast, we see a dense mass with peripheral speculations and pleomorphic microcalcifications. While in the left breast, we see what looks like benign popcorn calcification. Oh, I just gave you the answer. So um, uh, in this case, the right, uh, the, the case one is a cancer and case two is actually benign. It is an involuting calcified fibroadenoma. However, because of the dense calcification, the appearance on ultrasound can be very similar to that of a cancer. And therefore, uh, this misunderstanding or mistake can happen, okay? The take home message there therefore is you need an ultrasound and you need a mammogram for correlation. And this is a case from last evening. Like, you know, many of you were there for the quiz, but just to re-emphasize the point, okay? Like in this case, 59 year old new onset palpable lump in the left breast, we see a benign popcorn calcification, but along with that benign popcorn calcification, there is a soft tissue mass with irregular margins surrounding it. The two pathologies are coexisting here. There is an involuting calcified fibroadenoma and an invasive cancer right beside it. Okay, this happens in less than 0.1% cases, which means one in a million cases. This is not the rule, but the exception to the rule. Having said that, having that mammogram for correlation along with your breast ultrasound is mandatory. Okay, so the teaching points are, in women above 40 years of age, presenting with a palpable breast lump, always start with a mammogram. If there are pleomorphic microcalcifications associated with a mass, it is more likely to be malignant. And coarse popcorn calcifications leading to dense shadowing and ultrasound mimics malignancy. Hence, correlation with that mammogram becomes very, very important. Okay, here's the third case. This is a 25 year old with a new onset palpable lump in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast. Okay, what? is the most probable diagnosis. A, fibroadenoma, B, phalloides tumor, C, cancer, or D, cyst. Mitusha, can we have the polling, please? Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so, uh, so we have about 56% um, um, of the audience who thinks it's a fibroadenoma and 40% of the audience who thinks this is a phalloides tumor, okay? Now, I'll explain why this is what it is and why it is what it is, okay? Mm -hmm. So the answer here for us is, this is indeed a fibroadenoma, the garden variety benign fibroadenoma the lesion which is most common in young women only after benign cysts, okay? Typically these, these masses, like, you know, we have had the series of lectures yesterday by uh, Suma, Madhvi, and everyone was talking, uh, and uh, Shikha, and they were talking about Bayrad's lexicon. Like, how do we describe such a mass? It is an oval mass, ovoid mass with smooth echogenic margin, okay? It is uniformly hypoechoic, parallel to the pectoral muscle. It is a solid mass, and it has uniform cystic spaces in it. Okay, this is very classic of a fibroadenoma. And typically this is the type of lesion that happens in women under 35 years of age with an incidence of about 50 to 75 percent. Then what does a phalloides tumor look like? So let's have a look at this. Here's a 40 year old with new onset palpable lump in the right breast. Now let's have the polling please. Now what is the most probable diagnosis? 
Okay. Excellent. So see, look at the power, power of education. 88% of you got the answer right. Okay. Now this one is a phalloides tumor. Why? Okay. Now this also has an ovoid shape, an oval shape, smooth, but lobulated margin. It is not exactly homogeneously hypoechoic. It is heterogeneously hypoechoic. It is parallel to the pectoral muscle, but notice these non-uniform cystic spaces, okay? This is quite typical, okay? And these are the lumps that typically happen in the fourth decade of life. We give them B3 or we, we, we deem them as high risk and they go for surgical excision because the, the borderline cases, like, you know, the ones which are like a low grade phalloides, and um, like malignant phyloides, th there can be a little bit of an overlap between them. And on core biopsy, based on limited samples, it may not be, uh, 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 we may not be able to tell, okay? Therefore, these are considered high-risk lesions mm -hmm. and they are surgically excised, okay? Here's another case. 27-year-old lactating female presents with a new onset palpable lump in the upper inner quadrant of the right breast. What is the most probable diagnosis? There is a full lecture coming up on uh, lacta uh, lesions during pregnancy and lactation, but this is just one of the cases to give you an idea about, you know, the whole range of fibroadenomas and phalloides. Okay, so what is the most likely diagnosis? Mitusha, maybe have the polling, please. Okay, so almost 50% think that this is a fibroadenoma, okay? And the other 40% think that this may be a galactosine. Now, here is something that I want to caution you about. I want to caution you that as soon as a lactating woman walks in through the door, even before we scan her or even before we ask her for the history, we are thinking of one of two things. We are either thinking galactosine or we are thinking abscess, okay? we do not want to broaden our, our imagination, but that is right also, because common things being common will happen first. However, in this case, what was the diagnosis? This was actually a cancer, okay? How did this happen? This is only a 27 year old, besides she's lactating, okay? Look at the mass. Although it is an oval mass, it is an ovoid mass, there are micro lobulations along the margin. So see this margin? These are called microlobulations. This is a sinister sign. The mass is heterogeneously hypoechoic. Although it is parallel to the pectoral muscle, there is also one another sinister finding, which is an enlarged lymph node with complete to near complete loss of fatty hilum. Okay. So in this case, if you see something like that, a solid mass with some indistinct features or indeterminate features, like in this case, heterogeneously hypoechoic with microlobulations and an enlarged lymph node, you should you don't get biased by the age of the patient or the fact that she's lactating. Pregnancy associated breast cancers is a known thing. And Dr. Poonam Bajaj will be talking about it in detail in the subsequent lecture. Okay. But this is just to bring to your attention that don't assume any any solid lesion happening in a young woman could be a fibroadenoma or at best a phalloides tumor. Cancers do happen in younger women too. Okay, so what are the things that we look for? If you try to imagine the margins, this becomes easier. If it is a fibroadenoma, a classic fibroadenoma will have a smooth margin like a Mari biscuit. If it's a phalloides tumor and there are gentle lobulations, it starts looking like animal crackers. And if it is a cancer, in a younger woman, they typically are oval or ovoid in shape. It's very hard to come to that diagnosis of cancer immediately. So look for other subtle signs, like not just the shape, but the margins, the uh, through transmission, the ecogenicity, all of that has to be put together. Remember Derek's talk yesterday and look for those micro lobulations. So ask yourself, am I seeing a Mari biscuit margin? Am I seeing a Monaco biscuit margin? Or am I seeing animal cracker margin? Okay, one by one, you start evaluating these features. 
what are the other things like derek explained in his talk yesterday other than the you look for angulations along the margins you look for micro calcifications associated with the mass you look for these speculations lines going out from the mass and when you put everything together from your ultrasound and your mammographic features you will be able to reach to a conclusion whether we are dealing with a malignant or a non malignant lesion but is that the final answer connected somebody got unmuted please can you check yeah uh, please please uh, mute yourselves thank you okay next is a 30 year old who presents with a painless palpable lump in the left breast and this happen happens so often right lots of young women come with either pain in the breast or they can come with focal uh, focal area of um, uh, palpable nodularity okay so what is the most probable diagnosis 30 year old painless palpable lump in the left breast a is it normal breast tissue b is it a fibroadenoma c is it a cancer or d do we need a mammogram for correlation okay participate in the voting because that makes you think and any time you think about a problem it registers okay so i would encourage all participants to participate in this polling this is a important exercise now everyone has said need a mammogram for correlation i would like to caution you first okay first thing is not every young woman requires a mammogram okay mammogram is reserved uh, for typically performed for women above 40 years of age but if the woman is less than 40 and there is some finding on the ultrasound which is inconclusive or uh indeterminate then we can perform a diagnostic that single mammogram is called a diagnostic mammogram for correlation in this case i could clearly feel the palpable lump it was what looked like diffusely echogenic breast parenchyma there were hypoechoic spaces but we we were wondering are, are there calcifications we could not understand the the fact is we really could not understand what was going on so the decision to perform a mammogram okay mm -hmm. when we performed the mammogram what did we come across on the mammogram although the mammogram is dense do you notice something do you notice something here corresponding to the area of palpable concern what we saw was pleomorphic micro calcifications in a regional distribution okay often times the clinicians will ask us what are you going to achieve from a mammogram in any case this is a young woman the mammogram will be dense but things such as pleomorphic micro calcifications and architectural distortions can still be seen on a mammogram therefore performing that mammogram for problem solving can be pertinent okay so given this finding now what is the most probable diagnosis a is it normal breast tissue like we thought initially on ultrasound b is it a fibroadenoma or c are we dealing with a malignancy once you see pleomorphic micro calcifications on the mammogram and that too in a regional or segmental distribution what should you be worried about okay almost 86% of you have got it correct 85% yeah and and um, everyone like 85% of you agree that this this is a cancerous lesion okay this is indeed in keeping with high grade dcis this is very classic pleomorphic micro calcifications in a regional distribution so what's about this radiation what's up with the radiation not just the clinicians but also the patients will question you because they have done enough reading on google that radiation is harmful and therefore they don't want a mammogram they will take half an hour of your time in your clinic and complain and argue with you so what is the remedy for that what is the solution for that knowledge is power if you know your stuff you can explain not just to the clinician but also to your patient you must know that a single mammogram will give a radiation dose of 0.0004 gray okay 1 gray is equal to 1000 milligray okay so 
and the fatal dose is usually above 5 gram to reach that fatal dose you know how many mammograms a woman would need 12000 mammograms 12500 mammograms do you think in one lifetime any woman will have 12500 mammograms for some context in hiroshima the dose that was released in that bombing was 9.4 grams okay sometimes i simply tell my patients i assure you that i'm not going to bomb your breast in the mammography room okay be rest assured it's minimal mammogram and the real risk in our country is locally advanced breast cancer missed cancers leading to locally advanced breast cancer that is a real risk risk if we are looking at risk benefit ratio and the uh, risk of developing a breast cancer from that one single diagnostic mammogram is close to nil therefore don't be afraid of doing that mammogram if you need to do it okay remember i said if you need to do it don't unscrupulously start doing mammograms for women under 40 who are who do not need it but if you need it there is no harm doing it okay often times when you take one flight from mumbai to london you will get more radiation than you would get from one mammogram okay so if you explain this to the patient and if you explain this to the clinician and most of all if you know that you're doing the right thing for the patient and this radiation is not harmful then please go ahead with it okay now the teaching points here are in women below 40 years of age thorough assessment of mor morphologic features on ultrasound is paramount if the features are suspicious on ultra ultrasound then proceed to a mammogram if they are indeterminate on or suspicious on ultrasound then there is no harm in proceeding to perform a biopsy next case this is a 40 year old who presents with a new onset palpable lump in the right breast and this is what we see an oval and a coic mass with posterior shadowing what is the most probable diagnosis a cyst b fibroadenoma c cancer or d need aspiration for correlation now we have the mammogram also and we have the ultrasound also what is your diagnosis okay that's good okay so most almost 76% of the audience has voted for cyst which is the correct answer however 22% think that we should do an aspiration so that is a point that needs to be um, explained okay this is how how a simple cyst a classic typical simple cyst looks ovoid or round mass smooth margin predominantly anechoic it may be parallel to the uh pectoral muscle or may not be it's typically a cystic mass with posterior through transmission and the most common cause of breast mass is in premenopausal women okay we typically do not recommend aspirating benign cysts the reason being you remove one cyst you aspirate one cyst she's going to develop some other so when do we actually aspirate cysts if they are very large sometimes the patients will say that i can you know i can feel the uh, i can see the lump through my clothes through my bra okay it's gotten that big like 5 cm or over or sometimes they get very painful which means they have bled into themselves okay in those cases we do cyst aspiration those are the two indications where cyst aspiration is indicated otherwise we do not recommend aspirating simple cysts or benign cysts for that matter this is the next case again same age group 40 year old with painless palpable lump in the right breast what is the most probable diagnosis um a cyst b fibroadenoma c cancer or d need aspiration for correlation again we have a well circumscribed mass on mammogram and on ultrasound we see this what looks like an ovoid mass with smooth margin and posterior through transmission so what is the most probable diagnosis mitusha can we have the voting please okay looks like the voting option is not working here so in any case i'll give you the answer here the answer here and brace yourselves uh, people it is a cancer okay so how did that happen okay look at the mass now okay it it is heterogeneously hypoechoic okay and sorry bitusha uh, we don't need the poll here uh, because i moved on okay 
although it looks like it is it is ovoid in shape look at the margins there are angulations along the margin there are angulations along the margin okay uh, there are non uniform cystic spaces which is a sign of necrosis within the lump and this is like i explained earlier uh, typically seen in very high grade cancers typically seen in triple negative cancers they grow very very fast they are very very cellular so because they grow fast that classic speculated mass is not seen speculated masses happen in low or intermediate grade cancers when they grow slowly they cause a desmoplastic reaction in the surrounding breast tissue and therefore we get speculated masses in high grade cancers tri tri triple negative cancers they grow very fast so they are well circumscribed masses and the posterior through transmission is not a sign of benignity posterior through transmission just indicates that it is a very cellular mass and the satisfaction of search can be a very bad thing in radiology okay as soon as you find the lesion sometimes you're like okay it's a the, the, it's a cyst finish remember to scan through the lesion why because you noticed in the first first image it almost looks like a well circumscribed mass only when you scan through the entire lesion you notice the margins the ecogenicity the necrotic spaces and the rest of the thing okay so uh, so doing a thorough job even after you find a lesion becomes paramount to coming to a correct diagnosis okay this was in keeping with invasive duct carcinoma grade 3 this was one of the triple negative cancers okay so just to give you an overview about what benign or malignant lesions would look like a fibroadenoma a classic garden variety fibroadenoma this is what it looks like a phalloides with the lobulations non uniform cystic spaces a benign simple cyst or a invasive ductal carcinoma which is typically high grade there can be an overlap of features here but if you look at the smaller nuances you will be able to come to a diagnosis and make a decision as to which of these goes to a biopsy important point to remember posterior through transmission is not a sign of benign lesion and non uniform cystic spaces can be a rather concerning sign which requires biopsy now here are four cases which i have put together which is the most probable cancer case 8 where we see a well circumscribed mass in the right breast case 9 where we see a small little irregular mass in the medial right breast do we see anything in case 10 it is a heterogeneously dense mammogram and case 11 it is a complete white out so which of this is most likely a cancer yeah most of you think that it is case 9 and case 10 and i can understand why okay 70% think that case 8 and case 9 is cancerous but i have news for you okay and it is not very good news the news is all of the above have cancer how did that happen we are only seeing lumps or masses in case 8 and case 9 what happened to case 10 and case 11 we have been advocating mammography all through the talk and now mammography is not helping us how did that happen it was not supposed to happen okay remember it is the nature of the beast what does that mean breast is a combination of fat and fibroglandular tissue okay more the fibro fibroglandular tissue lesser the sensitivity more the fat higher the sensitivity so when we have what we call a fatty breast type a breast composition it is very easy to see masses it is easy in type b also where there is 50% fat and 50% fibroglandular tissue but as soon as the fib fibroglandular tissue gets more like heterogeneously dense or dense it is impossible to see what is happening behind that fibroglandular tissue okay in this case there is at least an area of architectural distortion what we mean by architectural distortion is the normal breast parenchyma is getting pulled in remember we used to have those little pouches my grandmother used to carry one little uh, pouch to uh, put all those coins and there used to be a drawstring on top of it when you pull the drawstring how things come together that's what happens when a cancer is developing the rest of the breast tissue pulls in together and that is what architectural distortion means okay so at least that subtle sign is there but in case uh, 11 it's a completely white mammogram that subtle sign is also not present but there are cancers in all four of them okay and like i said density plays a vital role in detection of lesions on a mammogram denser the breast lesser the detection rate so correlation with ultrasound is also mandatory for new onset palpable lumps 
Now, last couple cases. This is case 12. 46 year old presents with painless palpable lump in the right breast since one month. She also has a strong family history of breast cancer. And this looks like a nice, beautiful, pristine mammogram. There is enough fat in there, very little fibroglandular tissue. She's complaining that she's feeling a lump. When we do this beautiful high-end digital mammogram, do we see anything in the right breast? Not really, okay? Now we do an ultrasound also because we are not seeing anything, right? What is the most probable diagnosis? Now this is something, Mitusha, let them take the question for a uh, poll for this one. Most probable di diagnosis, normal shadowing breast tissue. B, we can ask for a six month follow up because mm, we are not certain what is going on. C, cancer or D, need additional evaluation. Okay, so we have uh, like, you know, the, the, uh, the floor is divided literally between C and D. C, like 33% feel that there is a cancer and 45% uh, think that we need additional evaluation. Okay, we were of one of the 45%. I was not sure that if I decided to biopsy also, I would get the right region. Where does the, where does the mass uh, start and where does the uh, shadowing start? Will I know the transition even if I do a blind biopsy? Like I wasn't sure. I definitely needed additional evaluation here. Okay, so what did we do? We performed a contrast enhanced MRI. And on the contrast enhanced MRI, what did we see? We saw asymmetric non-mass enhancement and Shikha explained to us very nicely, like you know how this uh, uh, like uh, pattern of enhancement is described. It is in, a, in, in uh, the segmental, uh, segmental asymmetric non-mass enhancement, which is very, very concerning for two things. What could we be dealing with here? Okay, A, normal enhancing breast tissue, B, fibrocystic change, or C, invasive lobular carcinoma. Can you take the polls, please? That's correct. Invasive lobular carcinoma. So, invasive lobular carcinoma accounts for less than 15% of all the invasive cancers that we see uh, in the breast, okay? But most of the times, they may be occult on conventional imaging, such as mammogram and ultrasound for one reason. These are, uh, these are cancers which grow along the Cooper's ligament. So they do not give rise to that classic desmoplastic reaction or classic masses. But because they are tumorous growths, there is neoangiogenesis. And therefore on MRI, we see them as asymmetric non-mass enhancement, okay? And this was indeed in keeping with invasive lobular carcinoma. So other than density, is there any factor at play? Like I explained, neoangiogenesis plays a vital role in detection of cancers. Therefore, contrast enhanced MRI has a higher sensitivity as compared to a mammogram. So between mammogram and contrast enhanced MRI, it is like structural imaging or anatomical imaging versus functional imaging. So should we do a MRI for every case? Not really. It is not indicated. We always start with conventional imaging, mammogram, ultrasound. And I'll tell you 80% of the times we can resolve issues with that. It is only those 20% of the times we need high-end functional imaging in the form of contrast enhanced MRI. But the problem remains that contrast enhanced MRI is slightly expensive. And sometimes patients can also be claustrophobic. So do we have any other tool where, uh, which can be helpful? So let's look at that. Okay, with a contrast enhanced MRI, we at least need 1.53 Tesla magnet, cost of the equipment, image acquisition, longer time of acquisition, some patients are claustrophobic, and above all, expertise for interpretation. Not all the radiologists across the country are trained to, to read MRI, okay? But women need problem solving in cases like that. So what is the other option, okay? Is there any other cost-effective one-stop shop where we will get structural as well as functional imaging, okay? Along with 2D full-field digital mammography, now we can also do contrast-enhanced mammography. And there's a full talk coming on that by Rashmi Sudhir later in the afternoon, okay? So just this one last case to drive home the message. 42-year-old with occasional palpable lumpiness in bilateral breast on and off. Do you see any abnormality? The mammogram is beautiful, pristine, very good technique, very good quality. We see scattered fibroglandular densities, 50% fat, 50% fibroglandular tissue. Are we seeing any abnormality? Perhaps this little focal asymmetry in the lower inner quadrant of the left breast. So when we do an ultrasound, 
This corresponds to an ovoid hypoechoic fibroadenoma in the lower inner quadrant. But in the right retroareolar region, I see all these dilated ducts with introductal lesion or introductal debris. I don't know. So I compare to the contralateral left retroareolar region. And in the contralateral left areolar, sorry, left retroareolar region, I see normal sized ducts. Okay. Now, what should I do? Is this concerning? What should be the next step? Okay. Normally, I would have asked for a contrast enhanced MRI, but our newest acquisition was contrast enhanced mammography. And trust me, it only takes 10 minutes to perform a contrast enhanced mammogram. We have to establish a vein, uh, inject contrast, make sure that the patient does not have any contrast media allergies. Serum creatinine is done, okay, which in our institute we can get within 45 minutes because it's in the same center and we performed a contrast enhanced mammogram, okay? What did the contrast enhanced mammogram show us? Ta-da! There was asymmetric non-mass enhancement involving the entire upper outer quadrant of the right wrist. Okay, now I know what the abnormalities and where the abnormalities. So we do a, a core biopsy of the right retroareolar region, and it turns out to be a high-grade intraductal carcinoma, okay? High-grade DCIS, okay? So CEDM, can be performed on the same unit as your 2D digital mammography. God, requires an additional software on the same FFDM unit and time of acquisition is the same as a 2D mammogram. It does not require that much expertise in interpretation because you know the way we look at things is similar to a mammogram. So teaching points, mammogram and ultrasound gives us structural imaging, contrast enhanced breast MRI and contrast enhanced digital mammography give us morphological and more importantly, functional information. Reliable problem-solving tool for excluding malignancy that cannot be confirmed with conventional imaging, okay? Remember, it is only a problem-solving tool. Most of your questions will be answered on the mammogram and ultrasound and the subsequent biopsy, okay? And remember, be cognizant of this fact. Most of the cancers will happen in women above 40, 50 years of age, okay? That, that age group of 40 to 50 is very risky because 10% of the 10 to 20% of the times it can either be a cancer, cyst or fibroadenoma. So your antennae should be out all the time, especially for that age group. But also remember below 40 years of age, like 26 to 40 or even below 25 years of age, the incidence of cancer is not zero. Okay. It ranges between one to 10%. So don't assume that because it's a young woman, it can't be cancer. Have a, a thorough assessment of those lesions and your level of suspicion should always be high. In summary, palpable breast masses rank second to breast pain among the common presenting symptoms. Risk of breast cancer varies with age. For new onset palpable lumps in young women below 30, always start with ultrasound. For women over 40, or women under 40 with suspicious ultrasound features perform mammogram and ultrasound. And only if your mammogram and ultrasound are equivocal, then go ahead for functional imaging in the form of contrast enhanced MRI or contrast enhanced digital mammography. And remember in breast imaging, it is always, always, always multimodality approach and image guided core biopsies for definitive diagnosis. Okay, with that, I wish to thank you, but I also want to remind you of this Hippocratic Oath that we took. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug, which means don't forget your compassion and empathy towards your patient. For you, it may just be one of 100 women that you are seeing. But for that patient, you're the only doctor she's come to. And she's very, very concerned that she may be dealing with breast cancer. Okay. So as long your compassion and empathy is in place, you will be a good doctor. Okay. So thank you for your kind attention. And uh, I'm going to